Subactivity diagrams allow you to decompose the functionality in an activity diagram. In other words, a subactivity diagram lets you show an action in more detail, breaking an action down into the steps that make it up, which helps keep an activity diagram from becoming too cluttered and hard to understand. In an activity diagram, an action that's broken into a subactivity diagram is indicated by a rake symbol. Let's look at a very simple activity diagram. This is for receiving and processing a membership application. Here's our decision point. When an application comes in, if the fee is included, we follow this path. If it's not included, we follow this path, send an invoice, and at that point the application object is pending. This little symbol here, by the way, is a final node, but it's a final node for a particular flow, as opposed to this symbol, which indicates the finality of an entire activity. Here we have the rake symbol in the process membership action. And that rake symbol, as I said, indicates that there's a subactivity diagram which breaks this action down into the steps that make it up. Now some UML tools don't include this rake symbol. And if that's the case with the tool that you're using, it's easy enough to draw the symbol in paint and paste it into your diagram. So let's look at what goes into a subactivity diagram. And a subactivity diagram looks something like this. We have the subactivity name, which should be the same as the action that you're breaking out and decomposing into its functionality in this diagram. So for that action, for that subactivity, we have an input parameter. And then in here, we list the steps, the actions, the paths, the decisions, and so on that go into that subactivity. And then when you come to the end of that process, when the action or the subactivity is finished, we have the output parameter. So in our activity diagram here, the subactivity that we're breaking out is process membership. And let's take a look at what that might look like. So this is our subactivity and it has the same name, process membership. Our input is the membership application. That's our input parameter. When the membership application comes in, we reach a decision point. Did the applicant pay for premium membership? If so, we add that applicant to the VIP club. If not, we follow this path and add the applicant to the rank and file. After we've assigned the applicant to a type of membership, we come to a merge point, and whichever path we've taken here, add to VIP club or add to rank and file, we assign the member a number, and then our output parameter is the member ID. So this shows you the steps that go into this one action in our main activity diagram of process membership. Now the danger in using subactivity diagrams is going too deep. You want to avoid too many layers in your diagram set if possible. Aim for an activity diagram that gives a clear overview, like a road map. Really it's a matter of two things, clarity and balance. If your activity diagram starts getting too cluttered with too many subactivities, making it hard to read and hard to follow, break those out into subactivity diagrams. If on the other hand you find that you have dozens and dozens of subactivity diagrams so that you can't follow the main activity diagram without flipping back and forth between pages and looking at those subactivity diagrams, then you want to bring it up a level. Include more of that detail in your activity diagram and minimize the number of subactivity diagrams.